Hi, how are you? We're back. Um, had a long day going to a funeral, huge funeral, big family. It was really nice to see all the nieces and nephews and cousins and get lots of hugs. Even though funerals are sad, it's, it's really nice to have that reunion. And um, we just got back sh shortly, so we're now going to do this quickly because we're taking some family members out for supper. And so that's three, three funerals in the last couple of weeks. We had a, yeah. a family member die at Christmas Day, and then two, when we're having our Christmas reunion last weekend, you know, close friend and a family member. So somebody said to me, those things happen in threes, so you should be good for a while. So let's hope. Not superstitious. Yeah, we're not superstitious. So we're going to start with prayer, and then we'll do the audio, and then we'll get into our readings. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you for the yes, awesome God. privilege of being able to read your word. Mm -hmm. We ask that you, through the reading of your word, reveal yourself to us, and we come to you and seek your face for counsel and wisdom in all things. And we do ask for that, Lord, as you read your, as we read your word, that you will give unto us your counsel, yes. that we may know you better. Bless each and every one that listens, Lord. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to be reading from, um, it's day, day 10. <laughs> we're going to be reading from Genesis again, naturally, but chapter 25 through 26. And we're going to be reading Matthew 8 and 17. And the little um, story that you're going to hear shortly is called A Call From. And it's about um, a university. <laughs> that was that yeah. Oh no, sorry, I, I'm dead. Go figure. You've turned the book up wrong. <laughs> I'll blame it on you. It's called The Eye That Never Sleeps. There okay. we go. And uh, the texts are about the death of Sarah. And uh, we're mm -hmm. going to hear about Isaac and Let's Rebecca as well. Save that for later when we get into it. I will. I just try to bait them into listening to the program. So you don't know. Yeah, but you got it. <laughs> so are you ready for audio? Here we go. We can sleep in peace when we remember that God is awake. Cindy S. Casper has written today's meditation titled, The Eye That Never Sleeps. See? Detective Alan Pinkerton became famous in the mid-1800s by solving a series of train robberies and foiling a plot to assassinate Abraham Lincoln as he traveled to his first inauguration. As one of the first agencies of its kind in the U.S., the Pinkerton National Detective Agency gained even more prominence because of its logo of a wide open eye with the caption, We Never Sleep. There is no better feeling than knowing that you're protected and secure. You feel peaceful when the doors are locked and all is quiet as you drift off to sleep at night. You feel safe, but many lie awake in their beds with fearful thoughts of the present or dread of the future. Some are afraid of commotion outside or of a spouse who has been violent. Some cannot rest because of worry over a rebellious child. Others are anxiously listening to make sure a seriously ill child is still breathing. These are the times when our loving God encourages us to cry out to him, to the one who will neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm 34 verse 15 reminds us that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Pinkerton may have been the original private eye, but the one who really has the eye that never sleeps is listening to the cries of the righteous. There we go. That's the reading out of the Daily Bread. And so we're going to start with uh, uh, Genesis 23 and I'll let you have the honor to read that. Why? The death of Sarah. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> why not? <laughs> okay, Genesis chapter 23. Another funeral. <laughs> Go figure. You know. <laughs> the death of Sarah. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died at Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from beside his death, dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am an alien and a, strain, and a stranger among you. 
sell me some property for a burial site here so I can bury my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choices of your tombs, of our tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. He must have made quite an impact on that community or else they were really afraid of him. <laughs> then Abram rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephraim, son of Zahor, on my behalf. So he will sell me the cave of Machpelah, which belongs to him and is at the end of his field. Ask him to sell it to me for the full price as a burial site among you. Ephraim the Hittite was sitting amongst his people and he replied to Abram in that hearing of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. No, my Lord, he said, listen to me. I give you the field and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people bury your dead. Again, Abram bowed down before the people of the land, and he said to Ephraim in their hearing, Listen to me, if you will. I will pay the price of the field. Accept it from me so I can bury my dead there. Ephraim answered Abram, Listen to me, my lord. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver, but what is that between me and you? Bury your dead. Abram agreed to Ephraim's terms and weighed out for him the price he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver, according to the weight, current amount among the merchants. So Ephraim's field in Mechpelah, near Mamre, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within the borders of the field was deeded to Abram as his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Afterwards, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah near, near Mamre, which is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. Very good. I'm almost tempted to stop and check the editing because so many times we did all this reading and then we go back and it, the, the YouTube's cut us off. So let's hope that we're still here to do chapter 24. And uh, yeah. this little mark means nothing. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean that oh. we're being recorded. Yeah, Maybe okay. these little numbers down here do. <laughs> okay, Isaac and Rebecca. And, and do we read 25 too or just 24? Oh, just 24. What? Abraham was now old and well advanced in his years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the chief servant of his household, the one in charge of all he had, Put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. They had some very peculiar ways of, of doing oaths back then. They didn't have lawyers, I guess, and, and documents, like bowing down and, you know, all this bartering for a grave and now this hand on the thigh. There's something we don't know here. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who has spoke to me and promised me on, a, on an oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is unwilling to come, back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abram, Abraham, pardon me now, and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and left. 
taking with him all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram, Naharam, and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camel kneel down near the well outside the town. It was towards evening, the time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, O Lord God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Ara Abraham. See that I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be with that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar, that I may have a drink, and she say, drink, I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your son <coughs> Isaac. Uh, my grandsons have come, so my dog's excited. Please be patient. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Malka, who was the wife of Abraham's brother, Nahor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jug, and came up again. The servants hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all of his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn where or whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out gold nose ring weighed a uh, becca and two gold bracelets weighed ten shekels then he asked whose daughter are you please tell me is the room in your father's house for us to spend the night she answered him i am the daughter of bethel the son that um the son that mecca bore to nahor and she added we have plenty of straw and folder as well as a room for you to spend the night then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on this journey. I'm watching the numbers to see if they're changing. <laughs> to the home of my master's relatives. This is a very long chapter. The girl ran and told her mother and household about these things. Now Rebecca had a brother named Levan, and he hurried out to the man at the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelet on the master's arm, he had, pardon me, <laughs> bracelet on his sister's arm, he had heard Rebecca tell what the man had told her. He went out to the man and found him standing by the camel near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out here? I have repaired the house and a place for the camels. So I'm going to pause it here because we're almost at the end of our time. And I'll do the next part of the next tape, okay? And so hang in. Tune in to our